one last thing. Health, and I'm very aware of bombardment by the health profession. It almost feels like a scare kind of a thing that if you don't do this and this and this and this and this and this, we're not going to get it early enough and you're going to get it. Um, the problem with that yeah. is when they reach you and you believe that, then there is no ending because your scare manifests, they get it early, but you know that it could happen again and 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 again. And so then you're just always running this race where you're wanting to catch things in the early subtle stages. And so there's no end to the scrutinizing of your body in order to find the little things that could then blossom into bigger, badder things. In other words, there's no ending to that. We are not going to go so far as to say that they understand law of attraction and therefore they know that if they can get you thinking about it that they will activate within you the very thing that will create what is their product. When you think about it, you are a literal minefield uh, full of all of the gems of diseases that they will <laughs> mine and profit from your body, you see. And so while it is to their advantage that they frighten you into the examination, we do not think that they realize that they are also frightening you into the disease itself. So what's the best way for us to move up that scale that you were talking about, that when that fear comes that, that they're very successful at doing? I felt very balanced. I felt very believing that my body was meant to be healthy, and I was just sailing along on this wonderful feeling of health, and then I had to go for a physical from my job, and all of a sudden it was like, boom, you didn't go for this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you could get it early, you better go, da da da, da. and I felt myself go from here all the way down to there. And a well, lot first of people, we want yeah. to say to you that in the same way that you can't go from depression all the way into ecstasy instantly, it's not possible for you to go from ecstasy all the way into fear all at once either. And, like that. Well, that's because you are not all the way into your place of believing in your physical well-being. In other words, there had to be something there that was activated. We'll tell you what Esther did. As Esther watched the commercials and saw family and friends having different experiences, she developed little by little over a long period of time her own natural sense of worry about her own body. And as she began seeing television commercials, and actually almost the identical thing happened to her that ha happened to you, was someone who she believed had the authority and the ability to see into her body gave her news that was very troubling. And as she felt the incredible disempowering fear of that, she was there for a little while. She had the good fortune of having us to visit with, and so we were soothing her. But nevertheless, the test was there, and the fear was there, and the discomfort was there. And Esther moved from that feeling of disempowered, stifling uh, fear to anger. Anger. And felt so much better in the anger. And once she got into that mode of anger, she hovered there for a few days in this feeling of anger. But it was a much softer, lighter vibration than the fearful vibration that she had felt before. And then she decided that she was not going to call the physician to get the results of the test at all. In her anger, she said, I'm not going to play that game at all, at all, at all, at all. And so she just kept beating the drum of her anger, beating the drum of her anger. How dare this woman express these things to me? So then the nurse from the office called and said to Esther, we double billed you on some tests and I want you to know that we have reversed the charges. And uh, Esther said, thank you for letting me know. And then the nurse said, by the way, you never did call for the results of your tests. Would you like them here? And Esther said, oh, it's not very important to me. And the nurse said, well, I just want you to know that everything's fine. And Esther said, well, I already knew that. That's why I didn't call back. <laughs> and then in three or four days, the physician called. And she is giving Esther a very hard time about not having called for her test results. And Esther said, well, I never worry about those things. And the physician said, well, you should worry. 
And Esther said, well, I don't worry about those things. And the physician said, well, you should worry because there's something troubling that I'm seeing here. And that is when Esther said, how do you sleep at night? Do you, do you, do you pull the wings off flies? Do you, do you, do you torture small animals? Uh, or, do you, or do you save all of your torture for women? In other words, the universe had already yielded to Esther the information that she needed so that she was standing on stable ground. But what if she hadn't been? In other words, what Esther did, she moved from that fear into anger, and oh, the anger felt so good. And she beat the drum of that for quite a while. She would turn on the television, and there would be a commercial, you know, one of those that says one out of every five has it, and you're probably the one. <laughs> and then Esther would shout at the television. Don't you know what you're doing? Of course you know what you're doing. You're profiteering, you're taking advantage of everyone. And after a while, the anger was such a familiar vibration, but the fear had disappeared. And we would say to Esther, she is in a much healthier, absolutely healthier physical condition in her anger than she was in her fear. But the anger long term is not going to serve her either. So we began to help her to release her anger by acknowledging that most of them are not doing it deliberately, that they have been sold a bill of goods, that they are not knowing about energy, they're not knowing about the resistance that takes place in the body, they don't know about the guidance system. They are calculating the results of how people have flowed energy. They are people that are studying the statistics of how bodies are turning out and they are not making any correlation between the thoughts and feelings that are present within those statistics. And so so how could they possibly come to any valid conclusion? Of course it is logical that the physicians would be worried about their patients when they see so many of their patients having experiences that they can't explain. How horrible it must be to see the results and have no clue about why and have all those different studies that are randomly offered that are giving them all of this information that is not valid. It is no wonder. And then Esther moved from anger of the medical community to true sympathy to them. In other words, it is no wonder they are so confused. What must it be like to be in that situation and not be able to give someone any standard to know whether they are moving toward wellness or away from it. In other words, negative emotion is moving you away from wellness. So here you are, wherever you are, and it does not matter what your physical condition is. It does not matter the state of your physical body. You can move your physical body into absolute well-being. It is our promise to anyone. But you got to beat the drum that moves you that way. You cannot beat the drum of fear. You cannot beat the drum of anger. You cannot continue to beat the drum that takes you into the realm of negative emotion, especially when you are focused upon your physical body. You got to come to the place where you know that you are well. You have to know that you are well no matter what diagnosis is given to you. You have to say to anyone, when you've got negative emotion and they want you to have positive emotion, you've got to say, you don't know. I can feel my improvement. And the same thing would be true if you found yourself with a physical diagnosis. You have to be able to say to the physician, you don't know. You don't know my vibrational makeup. You don't know the thoughts that I'm thinking and you don't know the improved state of being that I'm achieving. So you cannot know my progress. You can tell me that I've got an illness that is fatal, but you don't know. You don't know what I'm doing with my vibration. You don't know, but I know. Once you know, you know then it doesn't matter what anybody else knows because they cannot know about your body without superimposing what they think they know about everybody else's body. So as they look at your body, they have such a distorted view, you see. And if you let yourself see your body through their eyes, now you've got a distorted view. You've got to establish and maintain your relationship between you and you. Nothing matters except where I am and where I'm wanting to be. Nothing matters except how I feel now and how I want to feel. That's all that matters. And everything else is somebody else's business. Thank Good you. time for segment number three. Thank you. You're